Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the technical director at Pure Storage for our VMware Solutions Engineering team. Today, during this VMUG lightning round, we're going to be talking about NVMe over fabrics with vSphere. Why NVMe over fabrics matters, why Pure and VMware cares about it, and is investing in this technology, and what it means for your VMware environment. So there's, there's really two reasons behind NVMe, and they come down to one technology that's currently in use, and that's SCSI. There's a lot of reasons why SCSI is not the best solution, not the right path forward, but all of them fall into really two categories, around automation and integration, and then also, of course, around performance, which is the piece here that's usually generally most talked about. SCSI has been around since 1986. While there's a lot of cool things that came from 1986, myself included, not everything from 1986 is the right answer for today's environment and today's technologies. And so let's dig into a little bit of these reasons and then talk some more about what this means in a VMware environment. So the first question that usually comes up is around, well, performance. SCSI was built for spinning disk. All flash arrays, like pure storage, were built for, well, flash. SCSI and spinning disk was not designed in the right way. Spinning disks got larger and larger and larger, but they did not get faster. They could not really spin that much faster, could not keep up with these capacity increases. And so what that meant is that they got slower. As you put more and more gigs and terabytes behind one spindle, it got overall slower. It's harder to access all that data. And SCSI was built with that concept in mind. It did not really have the vision that you could get a ton of performance out of a single operation. So a lot of this is serialized. The limits are fairly low. There's only so many outstanding IOs that can be issued because it knew that the underlying storage couldn't do that. And we've spent the past 30 years working around this, building, building out solutions to work around what SCSI could do and what it can't do from a performance perspective. Do we change our queue limits? How do we implement this type of limiting within my VMware environment or whatever environment to open this up? Putting SCSI in front of an all flash array is kind of like a football stadium. Yeah, if it's 100,000 people, great, that's can get a lot of people in there. But if you only have 10 gates, it's going to take a really long time to fill that up. It's not built for bursts. Putting NVMe in front of a flash array is like putting a, in a specific entrance for every seat in that stadium. So if you need to fill it up instantly, you can do that to leverage the performance that flash actually offers. This is why NVMe is so important for flash based systems. It opens up that performance and that performance density. As flash gets larger, it scales with the performance that you need to access that capacity. And so we've been building NVMe into our platform up here for, for many years now, initially starting with our NVRAM, uh, accessing it via NVMe, then our internal flash within the chassis itself, removing this SSD layer, the SAS layer, and connecting directly via NVMe, then our expansion shelves with NVMe over fabrics actually to the back end expansion shelves. And then, of course, finishing that journey up with the front end itself of the flash array, how the host actually accesses the data via NVMe over fabrics on the front end, first with Rocky V2, Ethernet-based technology, and then Fiber Channel for the Fiber Channel folks out there. The other piece around this is the automation, is, is the integration. SCSI was built for what you see here on your screen. Things don't change that often in this environment. That drive there is not going to all of a sudden get larger. You're not going to add new drives every day. SCSI was not built to automate that communication because that communication wasn't automated. It did not happen frequently. The need for that dynamic access in the protocol wasn't really there. While they have enhanced the SCSI protocol over years, added the ability to issue unit attentions to notify of changes, it doesn't really work very well because it's not well implemented across the board. Not a lot of infrastructure support both sides of it and understand how it was implemented for it to really matter. SCSI bus rescans are required all the time to see, do I have new storage? Has that storage changed? Is it larger? This does not work well with, with these environments of today that are getting more and more automated, requiring you to do less in the bottom of the stack. We shouldn't have to be doing this type of stuff. This was a fundamental problem with SCSI as well. This was resolved in NVMe. NVMe was designed 
not only to take advantage of Flash from a performance perspective, but with NVMe and NVMe over fabrics allowed for that communication to occur automatically by the two pieces involved, your storage and the host, not the administrator doing the middle pieces. This is why Pure has invested in NVMe, and this is also why VMware has invested in NVMe. NVMware Fabric support was added in vSphere 7.0 just about a year ago, and they continue to enhance the stack to take advantage of what NVMe can offer. So there's a couple pieces of terminology that I want to go through in this presentation to, to, under, to introduce you to the topics around NVMe and NVMware Fabrics. First off, there's an NVMe adapter. The adapter is what the host uses to address that NVMe or fabric storage. There's also a controller. For every port on your array, there is a communication controller that the host communicates with via their NVMe adapter to see new capacity, to see new storage, to see new additions and changes to your environment. And this communication happens automatically between these two pieces. There's also an NQN, an NVMe qualified name. Smells very much like an iSCSI UIQN. It is the address of the initiator, your host, your NVMe adapters, and then also your array, its targets. This communication uh, occurs between NQN to NQN. This is how you can control ACLs, access lists for your NVMe over fabrics capacity. And your NVMe over fabrics capacity is something called a namespace. A namespace is pretty much like a device or a volume or a disk, whatever your array calls it today. In the NVMe or Fabrics world, a chunk of storage is a namespace. This is what you actually manage. This is what you format with a file system. This is what you snapshot, you replicate, whatever your NVMe namespace. On the Flash array, we refer to everything as a volume, whether it's a SCSI, whether it's a SCSI connected volume or it's an NVMe connected volume. But internally, the communication, and it's shown up in VMware, is called a namespace. So with NVMe adapters, you're going to see two types here. Today, in vSphere 7.0, VMware supports two options here. NVMware Fabrics via fiber, fiber Channel and NVMe over Fabrics via Rocky V2, RDMA over Converged Ethernet. With Fiber Channel, you're going to see hardware adapters. The hardware adapters require Fiber Channel adapters that support the NVM or Fabrics protocol. With Rocky V2, the Ethernet-based one, you do need RDMA-capable NICs, so Ethernet NICs that support RDMA. And then within VMware, you actually create a software adapter, one for one for each RDMA-capable NIC you want to use for NVM or Fabrics. And those adapters will appear when that, that creation, that link is created by you. And of course, that communicates via your v VM kernel ports that designate the storage traffic as you've designed your storage network. Then there's the NQNs and controllers. Your ESX server is going to have one NQN, and your array is going to have one NQN. When you provision namespaces, you provision it to an NQN. Hey, this NQN through my array can see this namespace or these namespaces. Each controller under that NQN is also uniquely identified. For Rocky V2, this is going to be identified via the IP address of that particular port. For Fiber Channel, it's going to be through the worldwide name of that port. This is a key piece around Fiber Channel and Rocky. Rocky, the configuration, is on the host side. You configure the controller, you connect to the IP, and it discovers the controllers, allowing you to provision namespaces. From a Fiber Channel perspective, there's less you need to do on the host, but you still do need to zone. Zoning is no different with NVMware Fabrics with Fiber Channel. You have the worldwide names of your array and the worldwide names of your host, and you connect those two together. That zone will allow your host to automatically discover the controllers, and then you use your array to provision the namespaces to that NQN. Lastly, there's namespaces. This is what you put your file system on, and it'll show up in VMware with an EUI, extended unique identifier with the serial number of that namespace or volume or whatever you want to call that. And that will also appear in your storage devices like normal, but with the designation of NVMe for that particular object. So if you want to learn how to implement this, how to get started, some more of the details around NVMe fabrics, check out our website on support.purestorage.com. You can go to it directly through that QR code or navigating through our support site. We have a lot more integration. You can find out more information at that support site across the vRealize stack, VMware Cloud Foundation, Virtual Volumes, NVMware Fabrics, Tanzu, et cetera, et cetera. A ton of information you can check out. And stay tuned for the rest of our presentations coming up this year around VMware and Pure. Thanks a lot.